The year 2020 is coming to an end. For Israel, it was a year of crises, from the political deadlock, which many argue is still ongoing, to the continuous anti-regime protests, Tel Aviv has had a lot on its plate. What are the protesters protesting? Well, every crisis Israel is in. First and foremost, they want an end to the coalition regime led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They also want the regime to finally pass a 2020 budget. Yes, that's right. Israel has yet to pass a 2020 budget, impacting many Israelis. This thing against the Prime Minister was involved in the three accusations. He should resign immediately, in my opinion, because the way the country goes, it's uh, the wrong direction. The latent NGO group says this is impacting many Israelis. The group says that over 20% of Israelis are living in poverty and hundreds of thousands of children don't have meals to eat at home. That was in 2019. According to Israel's Lated, that number shot up about 50% this year. So now we are facing a winter. And I personally know people who sometimes sit at home with three blankets because they're afraid to uh, turn on the heating uh, because uh, uh, they're concerned that they won't have enough money to pay electricity, for example. So when you see in, in the society elderly people or children who live in severe food insecurity and poverty, you understand that this is not the right way and we must morally and ethically and humanly, hum I mean in terms of uh, human and humanitarian uh, approach to take care of these uh, vulnerable uh, populations. The minimum uh, wage is not uh, high enough, so people who earn minimum wage also, also live in poverty. So this is one arena. We also need to invest in education, in housing, uh, in the health uh, uh, system, uh, that more people invest uh, private money if they have to get uh, better uh, health uh, treatment. But if you don't have money, so sometimes uh, you, won't, you won't get uh, the right treatment. Or if you don't have money at all, you won't buy uh, medicine, for example, because you need to pay uh, the house rent and, and so on. So the, 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 um, some examples is, for example, to um, increase the minimum wage, and also the allocations that the government give to uh, families with uh, children or to elderly people. I'll give you an example. If you're an elderly people in Israel and you don't have pension and you, re and you relate only on the government uh, allocation, you will live in, in a poor uh, situation. I mean, you will be poor. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we must change because Elderly people cannot go to work. Mm -hmm. And if they rely only on the governmental aid, it must make them uh, live in dignity. Israel had to have a third election in April just to form a coalition cabinet. Even then, Israel was going for a fourth election. The political deadlock in Israel is taking its toll on the economy, policies and society, as the current caretaker cabinet is limited in its ability to enact concrete policies. The situation has become so bad that there is a butter crisis, 
where shoppers cannot find butter due to an acute butter shortage that has been blamed on Israel's political deadlock. The regime has yet to pass a budget for 2020. According to the latest NGO, there are 2.3 million Israelis living in poverty. But that figure is up 50 percent, latest claims. The other is by National Insurance Institute, which reported that the elderly and children are most vulnerable. Things are going for the worst, too. Earlier this year, Israel's economy has entered the biggest recession since Israel was incepted onto Palestinian lands in 1948. According to the OECD, Israel's debt-to-GDP ratio is expected to be 75% this year and rise to 88% in 2022. Moreover, 20% of the Israeli working population is unemployed. With two lockdowns because of the coronavirus and a third one looming, Israeli workers and business owners are angry. Small business owners even went on a strike and led a rebellion against regime orders to lock down. To make matters even worse, the political deadlock seems to be ongoing, as yet a fourth election in less than two years also looms in Israel. The problem is that many budgets, such particularly for old people, for children who need help in terms of development or, or things of the sort. So these budgets that normally would be extended or added, these budgets are basically frozen. So as a result, you can see quite a few programs that are frozen and population that do not receive the social conditions that they were expecting to get. Many people uh, vote for parties that they are not really excited about only because they want to maintain the government or replace the government, even though they do it out of desperation, because they see that no, there's no uh, significant leadership in the future. Netanyahu, who was very effective in the beginning, over the time he became exhausted. And the Netanyahu that we have today is, is exhausted, is not effective. All he does is cling to his political situation and fight the legal system that is working against him. So many people are really frustrated because the current government is not effective and the alternative is not serious. So we really feel that we are living in a vacuum. On social media, the conversation was tense. Yuri says Netanyahu deprives Israel of its annual budget, forcing hundreds of thousands of citizens into economic chaos, unemployment and poverty. We will not give up. According to Ali, in Israel, poverty rate for Jews is about 15 percent, while for Arab citizens is over 50 percent, just like Canada's settler-native divide. Liberty and Justice for All says that's why they receive more financial aid than any place on planet Earth. I can say that, unfortunately, we didn't have to find a way to find a way to find a way to find a way כדי להימנע מסבב בחירות נוסף וכדי לאפשר לכנסת ה-23 ולחבריה לממש במלואה את המנדט שניתן לנו. אנחנו יוצאים כולנו למערכת בחירות לא פשוטה. אני קורא מכאן לכל אחת ואחד מאיתנו ולכל אחת ואחד מאזרחי ישראל להימנע מלהחריף את המתחים ולעשות כל שניתן כדי שמערכת הבחירות תתנהל ותסתיים באופן מסודר. וללא גילויי אלימות. Yes, it is uh, Israel is still in a political deadlock, but this time there is a game changer in the way that the main competition will be between two right wingers. And the only question is who of both of them, Benjamin Netanyahu or Gidon Saar, will be the next prime minister. Both are very tough nationalists. 
and right wingers and um, it's not good news for Israel. But right now they are the two only candidate, two only candidates with chances, obviously. It's not a possible government. I mean, uh, it was a big government with very little agreements, and above all, the personal things were the main issue, mainly the charges against the prime minister. And you cannot run a country, especially not in times of Corona, uh, you cannot run a country with such a government. I'm all, I mean, it was very clear that this government cannot function. Uh, above all, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, I mean, he takes the responsibility. Uh, uh, in the last years, uh, it's not really governments because Netanyahu does whatever he wants. He really became a one-show man for the good and for the bad. And all the responsibility is on his shoulder for the good and for the bad. The good things that happened to Israel, the bad things that happened to Israel, they are right now all Netanyahu because he doesn't let anyone else really to to run any kind of independent policy. One of the pivotal moments in Israel was the so-called deal of the century. Of course, it failed, but it had huge repercussions for the native Arab population of Israel. The so-called deal of the century will only impact the indigenous Arab population in Israel. The so-called deal would have made hundreds of thousands of them lose their citizenships and would change the status of their communities. It would make their neighborhoods a Palestinian enclave, cut off from the neighboring occupied West Bank by an Israeli barrier known as the Apartheid Wall. The so-called deal would put over 300,000 of them at risk of being transferred out of their ancestral home of pre-1948 occupied Palestine. So far, this won't happen, but it's not a new plot. Israel has been working on this since 1948. The population has been vocal this year over that and Israel's discriminatory and apartheid tactics against them. They believe that Israel wants them out. At least according to the debt deal of the century, Israel wanted to isolate them, to make them apart from the occupied territories. The population represents over 20% of Israel, and Tel Aviv feels threatened by them. It, it could be in, in a practice, yes, for, uh, for our generation, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's another Nakba, it's a sort of Nakba for our community. First of all, we have extended the lands all over uh, 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 the country and not just in our residential areas. So as part of the Palestinian people, we have extended historical rights that we are uh, demanding. Uh, uh, many of us here in the Triangle are uprooted uh, 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 Palestinians, which means that they are uh, uh, internally displaced uh, uh, citizens. We, uh, our original villages uh, were destroyed back in 48 during the Nakba. We are still demanding and we will continue to demand returning to our destroyed uh, villages like Lajon and Mizinat and El Kafrin. Uh, uh, and this demand uh, basically will be impossible if they implement this transfer. So maybe the idea is not to uproot us from our homes, but it's definitely to uproot us from our historical lands and to deny our right in these uh, lands. So for us, this is an important uh, issue. I believe that Netanyahu included this provision about the transfer of the Arab community of the Triangle in advance of the election as part of his campaign against Arab citizens and against the Joint List, the political representative of Arab citizens in Israel. 
Uh, Netanyahu uh, knows that uh, we are influential and that uh, our votes affect the national map uh, in Israel and could affect who will be the prime minister uh, in Israel. This is the reason why he is trying to weaken our struggle to weaken our uh, 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 political uh, 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 maneuver and uh, political uh, activity. And uh, part of that is basically to have less Arabs and basically to have less voters and less representatives in uh, the Knesset. This is a clearly racist uh, motivation. Uh, Netanyahu is very worried about uh, our uh, uh, gradually uh, influential role uh, within Israeli uh, politics. A recent video on social media shows Israeli Arabs walking around in Tel Aviv pretending to be Emirates, while Israelis waited in line to be photographed with them. In fact, they were trying to show how welcoming Israelis were towards Emirates, while discriminating against the original people of the land. On social media, the conversation was tense. Abir says it's almost like Israelis aren't racist against Arabs. Mujib says this is the Palestinian town inside the Green Line, where the Israeli military massacred scores of defenseless Muslim civilians during the Suez War of 1956. The deal of the century is there to serve Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump, it is about the Jews, it's about the Israelis, it turns a blind eye to the Palestinians, to the plight, to their cause, and it is hardly a surprise that uh, it didn't uh, um, find uh, many enthusiasts among the Palestinians. However, it was very useful in conveying the most important message to the Palestinians that the Americans are not a negotiator, they are a side in this conflict. No, it's, uh, it's dead together with uh, Donald Trump, who is leaving uh, the White House within two weeks. Uh, nobody really took it seriously. There are those uh, few uh, agreements with four Arab states, which I don't want to underestimate. They have some value, but this is not the deal of the century, because the deal of the century was about to solve also the Palestinian issue, which is the main issue and the, the Palestinian problem was, was not even touched. And uh, therefore, we better forget about the deal of the century, and we will see what will the next administration offer, but I have no expectations. We are not against the This is a decision of the אבל אם כופים עלינו בחירות, אני מבטיח לכם שאנחנו ננצח. ישראל is in a political deadlock. However, politically and ideologically and unethically they are more united than ever 
um, uh, what they really don't agree is to be ruled by Netanyahu, but uh, in terms of their uh, right-wing commitment, they are actually extremely uni united, and uh, the left has evaporated into total nothingness. Israel failed to make changes because the Israeli political system in the last few years is not there to serve the Israelis, but one, to serve oligarchs around the world, two, to save Netanyahu from the legal complication inflicted on himself. Is uh, that uh, is doing the best he can to save himself, um, but um, he has found out that um, he, at least within the political system, he has um, a growing number of opponents. However. The Israeli public still support him and will support a government under his leadership. They like him. According to the report by the Leited nonprofit, the portion of Israeli households living in poverty rose from 20.1% to 29.3% in 2020. This while the regime in Israel continues to ignore the issue, according to Israeli media. Israelis in general believe that Netanyahu is after saving himself from jail time, as he is accused of corruption and has a pending trial. Meanwhile, protests that have been taking place every week and sometimes every day for almost a year now are growing. Some believe that Israel is on the brink of an uprising that may reshape Israel forever. For now, 2020 is ending, but the crises faced by Israelis and Israel in general continue. Here is the news making the press in Israel. The Jerusalem Post. A new survey conducted by the Abraham Initiatives has found that most Arab Israelis, 58%, would participate in the Israel protest movement against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu if it highlighted ongoing issues facing the community, such as the economic situation and housing. Likewise, almost three-fourths, 73%, support the goals of the protest movement. I-24 News. UAE said to have suspended tourist visas for Israeli travelers. Several hundred Israeli passengers who landed in Dubai recently were denied entry into the United Arab Emirates, Israeli media report. According to the reports, the incident, which saw only Israelis holding other passports as well to enter, was caused by a change in the Emirati visa policy. Times of Israel Israeli War Minister Benny Gantz warned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on that he would not be Prime Minister again if Israel goes to a fourth election in two years, and once again urged him to pass the 2020 budget. Ynet News At least 25 people were arrested in occupied Jerusalem Al-Quds as police clashed with thousands of ultra-Orthodox Jews protesting the construction of a light railway line passing through their neighborhoods. A light railway line is set to go through the Bar Ilan area, with opponents saying it could disrupt the bus services and bring indecent behavior into the religious community. <laughs>